various different applications. Um, so maybe we can switch the projector, uh, sorry, the, yeah, the, the input of the projector to Steve's laptop over there, and he will give you a demonstration of the mobile application. Uh, this was an instruction to whoever controls the Beamer to please switch over. <laughs> Not sure if there's some magic keyword I need to trigger. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, so apparently yeah. some, yeah, okay. Steve can go ahead and, and present on what he can do with the mobile program. Yeah, so I'm, I'll demo the mobile implementation first. Um, First of all, um, we have an application called Osmo Khan, which connects to the um, phone via the serial port, um, which is already started. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah, this is, by the way, the setup. So we have this um, this 2.5 millimeter audio <laughs> going into the earphone, right? Um, and, and this is a regular phone. There's no modification has been made to either software or hardware of this phone. Yeah. So. Um, now Osmo Khan is connected to the serial port and waits for the um, bootloader command from the phone. Um, and it opens a socket to which um, higher layer, layer programs like mobile or, um, or other applications we'll show in a minute um, can connect. So now I'll start the mobile application which connects to the socket. Um, I already can open the VTI. Um, here you and can uh, see, it still tells you it's the OpenBSC control interface. It's a copy and paste mistake. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, now I'll boot up the phone. You can see that the code is downloaded. And there it goes. Now it connects to the network. It just read the SIM card data and does a power measurement over the whole spectrum. Yeah, you get the same colorful output as OpenBSC gives you. <laughs> but now somehow it loops. Uh, let me check. So what it does, it cycles over all the different radio frequencies, obtains power measurements um, and to determine where actually a cell is located and where um, uh, it uh, receives a signal and so on. Um, and. Um, uh, hopefully it will find our network that we are running here. Oh, um, yeah, that looks good. <coughs> so, yeah. Yeah, this, those are very verbose debugging outputs, so these bit errors are nothing uncommon. <coughs> yeah, so now we are connected. And, yeah, of course, what would you do? Let's try a phone call. <coughs> uh, you can call me. Uh, you're still on the, on the shell. You have to restart the telnet. Oh, yeah, sure. And uh, you can call the 9401 if you want. What was it, 941? 9401. Say something. Say something into the phone. What did you just say? Test. 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 There's a help mode integrated in the in the VTI, so you have a configuration file where you can um, handcraft your and put your own in, um, uh, email or all the config settings in there. So let me just show it. Um, so here you specify the e email. You can emulate all kinds of features. You can say you have no encryption 
support or um, no full rate speech support. So you can basically configure your whole phone or um, um, let the network believe that you have a 10-year-old mobile phone, for example. So there's yeah. a lot of testing that can be done. Yeah, you can also do things, um, uh, since we have full control, you can also do things like um, sort of alter your, uh, your position as it appears to the mobile network because there's this timing advance that is uh, used between the telephone and the BTS uh, which sort of gives the network an indication how far you are from the BTS and since we control the timing of course we can just adjust our timing a little bit this way or a little bit the other way and then we appear closer or further apart from the cell which uh, well is an interesting feature I guess. <laughs> We can, of course, also combine that by sending handcrafted or modified measurement results so the network will have an even, you know, even uh, more complete uh, idea that we are really somewhere else than we claim we are. So, yeah, one more thing to show maybe is um, we have fully integrated Wireshark support so you can um, use... <laughs> Um, I can call you actually. Uh, yeah, just wait a second. I uh, actually started it without the Wireshark support. Um, so there you have it. You see all the um, okay, you already information in, right? messages that go um, from the BTS to the phone and the other way around. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to call this phone. Uh, let's see if it's already completely connected. I'm not sure. Uh, it doesn't. Now it's completely collect, uh, connected. I was dialing too soon. Sorry for that. Yeah, that looks like that looks good. Yeah, call is connected. We have um, auto call. Yeah. Uh, now, if you can look in the Wireshark, you will see the setup request coming yeah, from sure. my telephone number. Um, if you go. Yeah, Back let's bit. see where the actually call was established. Connect a little bit further up here. Yeah, there's the connect. There was the call alerting, yeah. Yeah, this is, yeah, the ring, when, when the phone is ringing, you get the alerting message and so on. So, uh, <laughs> this is the... Yeah, but you can um, completely use it for, for analysis of the yeah. GSM traffic. Okay, yeah. let's move to the next app. Can we please switch over to this laptop again for a very short time? Um, or if it doesn't work, I have this. Yeah, you have the slides, so you can. <laughs> <laughs> It, it seems that Osmocom is not the only uh, sort of, I don't know, the only thing where handover is not working yet. <laughs> Was it Celloc? Oh, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Sorry? Is it, is it mine? Ah, okay. <laughs> mine, okay, well, okay, I own it. Um, so, uh, the other application that we have is a cell log application. I'm just going through two slides now. Um, the cell log application allows you to scan uh, and, and log cell beacon information. Um, you can uh, also then send random access channel requests uh, to get the timing advance. So, this, so, so if we request, a channel from e uh, we request a channel from each cell we see, um, and uh, by establishing a channel for a short time, uh, this timing advance is negotiated, and thereby we also know how far the cell is, ap uh, is, is apart from, from us, a certain granularity. And then if you connect a GPS receiver, you can uh, obtain um, well, the, you, can, you can get all this information and there's a second program called GSM Map that then parses those logs and uses triangulation to calculate the estimated cell position and generates KML files that you can use with Google Earth. And now... Um, can we please switch over to Steve's laptop again? Thank you. Ah, uh, yeah, so.
once again, same procedure, start up the phone. Yeah, now it does the initial power um, measurement just like mobile did. And now it tries to synchronize to all RFCNs found. Um, and there you see, that's the first cell, the T-Mobile cell, and it has a timing at once of zero, which is um, zero to 500 meters away. Yeah. Which is not too surprising, given that we are at a very yeah. central location in Berlin. Sure, and there's our cell, OpenBC. <laughs> 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 and of course it has a timing at once of zero <laughs> yeah so that runs in the loop you see um, there are over 500 measurements left but um, it creates a log file let me just show uh, was it there? No. And it saves um, the system information message messages and the uh, reception level of all cells and of course the timing at once. And um, then you can feed that into um, the GSM map application and um, you get something like this. So this is the way that was traveled with the phone yeah? and um, it calculates with the measurements made um, the distance and position of the cell, of the cell. yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can do it in a larger scale as well, for example, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or even get cells from other countries. Yeah, th this is at the, the northern coast of Germany, doing some measurements, and uh, you can actually get cells from Denmark, and you ski get the triangulations into Denmark up there. About accu accuracy, um, let me check. Um, yeah, it isn't actually that accurate, because you have um, those um, steps are like in 500 meters, and um, it... It's marked there, but it's actually there. So, but it isn't uh, it isn't uh, that high resist um, difference. Yeah. So, oh no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that was not what was not supposed to have. <laughs> Okay, yeah. you can continue with the slides, Steve. I think it's easier that way. Okay. I mean, just show the slides. I can, I can do the introductory sure. thing. And, um, that was the GSM map application. Yeah, so. yeah the, the other one is actually the first thing I think, I, if I remember correctly, was the first thing we had is the BCCH scan application, which is uh, relatively similar. It iterates over the full spectrum. It does a power scan. Then it tunes to all the channels that it has a very high received signal strength acquires the, the broadcast common uh, control channel and dump system information and so on to, excuse me, to Wireshark. So it's sort of a, a predecessor of, of what uh, BCCH log and, and uh, cell log and, and so on can do now. I think it's no point in demonstrating it separately, is it? I mean, you've seen that we can send the messages into Wireshark. It's, well. Basically the same thing, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next slide. Yeah, then we have CBCH Sniff, which is a, a, a cell broadcast channel sniffer um, uh, that just gets all the data it can get from the cell broadcast channel. Cell broadcast channel is something that used to be used more than it is today. Um, uh, when some operators are actually doing um, uh, putting their GPS coordinates of the cells in the cell broadcast. Um, I think O2 is the example in Germany here. Um, there are some more apps in there that are mostly R&D related. Um, and, uh, well, the idea is that we have this stack now and we have libraries and interfaces in there that you can use it. So if you want to write a, a scapey fuzzing gateway application that just establishes a radio channel to a cell and then you can send arbitrary packets from scapey maybe over UDP into this gateway and then over there, it's all there. The point is that we have those libraries, go ahead, write your own applications, do interesting things. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so sort of a summary of uh, what uh, has been going on. Um, the 